time for war, he says. Professor Stephen Hawking joins the chorus, calling for urgent action in the battle against climate change. Top scientists claim global warming has overtaken nuclear war as the greatest threat to humanity. Tonight, we report from the front line of global warming as the world wakes up to what's being called environmental catastrophe. We're live on the Antarctic Peninsula where the ice shelf is disappearing and the glaciers behind it are flowing into the sea faster than they ever have. If you want to see global warming in action, this is the place to come. The Antarctic Peninsula is now three degrees warmer than it was 50 years ago. Scientists say this pristine ice scape could be transformed into a giant quarry by the time your grandchildren grow up. A Lynx helicopter from HMS Endurance gave us a unique view of the glaciers that bring ice to the coast where it melts. Once, this glacier was surrounded by a huge ice shelf floating on the sea. Because of warming, that's collapsed. It's like taking a cork out of a bottle. Remove the ice shelves and the flow of ice down the glaciers accelerates. We're just outside Rothera Base and you can see behind me fresh blue ice. That's where this glacier has carved into the sea. Literally huge chunks of ice have fallen off to form the bergs out there. Scientists studying climate change here told me collapsing ice shelves have had a profound effect. We know that uh, the collapse of the ice shelves, which was one of the first signs we saw of climatic change down here, we know that doesn't contribute to sea level, that's floating ice. But we, we've recently discovered that the ice shelves act to buttress the ice behind them, they sort of hold it back. And so we now know that the glaciers behind the ice shelves are speeding up and that is contributing to sea level. The most dramatic collapse was of the Larsen ice shelf. In 2002, over 3,000 square kilometres of ice, 220 metres thick, broke off into the ocean. Chris Rapley knows what that could mean. The much-awaited United Nations report on climate change in two weeks will have a new estimate of how much sea level could rise because of Antarctic melting. Chris has his own idea. The evidence we have from the recent past is that sea levels can rise at a metre per century. They did so for 9,000 years. And sometimes they can rise faster than that, possibly even as much as five metres per century. Don't think that's applicable now, but a metre per century would be my best guess. Scientists once thought this ice-bound continent would never be a real threat. Now, they're changing their minds. Well, we spend a lot of time hearing about global warming, don't we? It's the reason uh, we're down here after all. But what exactly is happening? Well, as the sun heats up the planet, some of it's absorbed by the Earth and some is radiated back into outer space. The trouble is the carbon dioxide produced by cars, aircraft and power stations accumulates in the atmosphere, acting like a blanket and trapping too much of that heat. The net result simply is a warming of the atmosphere and a warming of the planet. So who's to blame? Well, in short, all of us, I suppose, but the balance is changing. The US is currently the world's single biggest contributor to greenhouse gases. In a few short years, it will almost certainly be overtaken by China. That's especially bad news for the millions of Chinese living in the dirty shadow of their economic miracle. It's like some vision of hell, an environmental apocalypse happening right now. This is the place where the coal fires burn throughout the night and where there is still darkness at noon. This is the place where the worst pollution cloaks the worst of the polluters, the coal processors, the power plants and steel factories. Welcome to the most polluted city on the planet, the city of Linfen. This city stinks, the assessment of one young boy. His mother hopes the face masks they wear offer at least some protection. Here you'll find the cheap goods China sells to the world, as well as this nation's least welcome export, the greenhouse gases their industries pump out. If China is the new workshop of the world, then this place is its engine room. Pretty much everything you can see here is fueled by coal. This nation burns an amazing 2,000 million tonnes of it every year. 
By the time the children of Lim Fun number two school are grown, China will have grown too, bigger than America in terms of carbon dioxide emissions. This is a nation learning that their economic boom also means environmental bust. What do you know about global warming? I only know that the ice at both poles will melt and the sea waters will rise and there will be less space for human beings to live. First of all, Linfen is very polluted. We need to clean up our own city. ITV News obtained these exclusive pictures of the city council destroying, they claim, the 200 dirtiest factories. But you wonder at their efficiency when their pollution monitoring kit is kept under wraps and covered in a thick layer of dust. It didn't look like it had been used for weeks. And on the outskirts of town we found this, a huge coking plant belching out unfiltered clouds of smoke. How dirty would you say this place is? So, I think it's not a small coke maker. It's very big and very dirty. That's the dirtiest that I've ever seen. China has set itself tough pollution targets and missed them dismally. Coal is bringing wealth to this country, but adding a literal meaning to the phrase, filthy rich. And Lawrence McGinty is with me now. Lawrence, can we be sure that uh, some of this is man-made? After all, a lot of people still believe it is a natural phenomenon. It's very often difficult, Mark, to distinguish between the man-made and the natural, but here in the Antarctic there are two big clues. Remember the ice cores we showed you yesterday, those long tubes of ice they bring up from underneath the ice sheets? They've measured carbon dioxide in those, and it's not surprisingly going up at an amazing rate. There's no other possible explanation except that that, that carbon dioxide is man-made. And secondly, where we're standing right now is getting warmer because westerly winds are coming in from over there. That weather pattern can only be explained in the models if you take account of man-made pollution. I think two strong bits of evidence from here, Mark, that it's very squarely down to us. Now, what about this? 800 miles south of here right now, an intrepid scientist, Andy Smith, is on the very front line of research into climate change. The 46-year-old from Wigan is spending three months monitoring a massive glacier the size of England that experts believe is thinning ominously. His is the furthest field team currently deployed from this very base. Just have a look at this and see if you can spot the only human beings living on the largest glacier in Western Antarctica. This was the last visit they had just over a month ago when the weather cleared and allowed a plane in to bring supplies. Much needed by scientist Andy Smith and his three colleagues living a lonely life in one of the remotest parts of the most remote continent on Earth. Andy on the left here is leading unique research into the thinning of the Pine Island Glacier. And he says there's definite evidence of significant change. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Over. I reached Andy on a high-frequency radio and he told me what he'd found. Until we arrived, nobody had ever been here before. Um, but so there's, uh, there's, there's definitely evidence from satellites that things are changing. And I've noticed that while we've been here, uh, there's lots of thin cracks opening up in the glacier all around us. They're just uh, a few millimetres wide, uh, but they do, uh, they do go on for about uh, 10 kilometres and they open up quite quickly. It's a bit like the, uh, the film I say, uh, and it shows that there's a lot of stress built up in the glacier just waiting to be released. And some other scientists here, Andy, are telling me that you've spent about two years of your life in a tent in Antarctica. Uh, some people might say that's madness. Over. So at Britain's furthest scientific outpost, the work goes on. Plenty more days under canvas yet for Andy of the Antarctic.